Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Authors to Know and Their Books to Read. My name is Martinique Brown. I'm so excited that you guys are here today for the show. You know why? Because I actually have an individual on here that has written a book with poems in it. This is my first time ever having a poet here. <laughs> my first time ever having a poet here on the show and I'm so excited. Um, if this is your first time ever um, just watching the show, make sure that you um, share this video now. Share, share, share. Also, make sure that you send me a friend request so you can always be notified of the different um, shows that I post as well as um, Follow me on Instagram and Dennis information is also listed in the description box. So I know that I told you that he is on the show, but uh, the name of his book is called Love, War and Glory, Spoken Words for All Season. So Dennis, Dennis, Hello. Dennis, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for inviting me. It's good to be here. I'm glad you are here. So Guys, like I said, if this is your first time ever watching this show, the way that we make this show a lot more interactive is if you ask questions and you post comments in the dis in the comment field, as well as um, I've taken all the stress and worry out for you. Everything that we discuss is going to be listed in the description box where you can purchase Dennis' book, as well as um, if you want to just follow Dennis so you can know about any book signings that he's doing, any type of other posting that he has, you will be able to follow him on Instagram, his Facebook page, and things like that. Or if you're interested in purchasing book, purchasing his book, all of the links are in the description box. Um, if you truly enjoy the shows that I have, make sure that you go ahead and just send a financial gift through my GoFundMe page that's actually in the description box as well so dennis if you can just tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself okay no problem so in my day job i'm a software engineer but in my spare time i do enjoy writing and what made me write love war and glory was i've written all this stuff in the past that i never did anything with it like some of the stuff is in the book i wrote over 10 years ago i never had a chance to share it with the audience so I got thinking about this in December in 2017 during the Christmas. I thought to myself, well, why don't you write a book? So then I went and did my research. I looked into, well, what would it take to write a book? That led me to discovering my publisher, Author House. We had some conversations. Things went from there. And then six months later, the book appears in Amazon. You make it so sound it was so a very easy. interesting journey. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, it wasn't. There were yeah. a lot of challenges. So what were some of the challenge? What are some of the challenges that you had? Because um, going from a software engineer to writing a book, those are two different fields. Like, what do you do? How did you do that? Um, I think I've always had a creative element to me, but I've never had a chance in my day job to really explore that as much. I think I also feel like people in the IT industry they get there's this perception of them being a nerd, being a geek. I kind of want to break that perception. Just because there's something you do in your day job doesn't mean that you don't have other talents. Mm -hmm. Like I remember when I went to a poetry um and show back in September, and because I came, it was after work. I came in my suit. The first comment they made was, "You look too serious to write poetry." But then when they heard what I write, people were like, "Huh, okay, <laughs> now I get it." Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So the whole saying, "Don't judge a book by its cover." Literally, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what type of writer would you describe yourself as? Um, good question. Conscientious, passionate, watch from the heart. I like to give a reading experience that people can connect to in terms of what they do on an everyday basis. Hmm, okay. Okay. But why poetry? Um, you know, poetry is just quick, you know, things that you write, that you feel at the moment sometimes, why poetry instead of just, you know, that's exactly, what, <laughs> that's exactly why I chose poetry, because I think with poetry, it's a genre that sometimes gets un overlooked. But the thing about poetry is you can be really explorative, really creative, and you can write basically almost what's on your mind. 
Whereas on a typical book, even though that's what I'll be doing for my next one, you have to stick to an agenda, stick to a thing. Whereas a poetry, you can explore a wide variety of different as attributes, so you can show, showcase your full range of writing skills. Mm -hmm. So is there anything behind the title of your book? Um, you know, yes, love, war, is. and glory. <laughs> what does all that mean? <laughs> so if you look at a lot of books out there today, some books will touch on love, some mm -hmm. books will touch on war, but when they think war, they think of, they say, going to Afghanistan, something like that. They don't think about, well, what are the challenges we as human beings have to face on an everyday basis? What are those internal battles they have to face? And glory is about, okay, let's see you got to wherever you want to go and where you want in life. How do you move forward and keep going on to the next thing? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to basically write something that explored all the three of those things, but in one single title. Okay, okay. Now, how many poems does your book have? Good question. Let me have a quick look. I forgot. About <laughs> Let me have a glander. <laughs> now, guys, if you don't know, just from um, Dennis' accent, he lives in London. Isn't that so cool? This is my first That's international. <laughs> my first I think maybe I've got about 80 poems at least. You say eight zero? Yep. Wow, that is good. But how long did it take you to write 80 poems? Was it just a matter of when you thought of a poem, you just you know wrote it down on a piece of paper and you always just kept these um, like maybe in a folder or something? How did how did that the so a lot of those poems yeah. I had, yeah. A lot of those poems that I had, some of them were stuff that's been around my laptop for over 10 years. I never did anything with it. But when I first started writing this book. I looked at my old poems and just basically brushed and cleaned them up. And then I thought about, okay, love one boy. What are the themes that you want to write about? So I wrote down basically like different sets of titles or themes that I wanted to explore. Mm -hmm. Then it was just a case of going in, writing about those themes and exploring them at full length. But it's, I guess I'm just more so thinking about if you have already written a poem and you feel like it needs to be you know, touched up a bit. I just feel like, do you feel like that takes out the uh, authenticity of it? Because this is something that you felt back then, you know, and then for you to change it, it's kind of like you're... I not like to say change it, I'm not saying touched up. It's more like a um, case of not really changing the, the content or the method. Why not just correct in punctuation and making sure that grammatically it makes, it makes sense. So that's what I mean by cleaning up. Because okay. a lot of the stuff I wrote is very on the fly and very what I was feeling at the time. And I didn't want to lose the essence of that. But there mm -hmm. were certain ones, like the man who went to war and won, I wrote that like 11 years ago, well, 12 years ago now. And I just, when I reread that, I didn't change anything, but just maybe tweak the punctuation somewhat. So that's what I mean by cleaning up. Okay. About 90% okay. of the material is all new, fresh stuff that. I literally just thought of what I really wanted to write this. Mm -hmm. So now, why did you decide not to just create three different books? One that talks about all love, one that talks about war and glory. Like, Why did you not decide to do it like that? Excellent question. Um, I don't know, I just kind of like the title, Love, War and Glory. It just kind of brought something to me because I thought there was no book out there that talked about those three things but in one single title mm -hmm. and I wanted to bring all those things together but in such a way to experience the highest of love you can basically go through your internal battles you can go and get the glory at the end so I just mm -hmm. felt like a coat told in a way a coherent story or coherent message mm -hmm. you know one thing that I think is cool about your poems is that because you did write some of them like 10 years ago and this is what I do with my videos sometimes. Like I have videos that are seven years old and I love to look at them to see where I used to be or what I used to look like, the things that I used to feel. And I feel like that's what you can do with your poetry. You know, when you were feeling a certain way, you know, 10 years ago, and then now you're able to look at in 2019 or 2018, um, how you thought back then is those like is that surprising to you some of the things that you you know you wrote back then like oh my gosh Dennis <laughs> um not necessarily surprising to me but more like um 
a reflection of where I was at that point in time. Like even some of the stuff I wrote this year, like for example, when I went Why Always Me, a lot of football fans will probably recognise that sentence from Mario Balotelli's shirt in the 6-1 victory at Old Trafford a few years back. Mm-hmm. But Why Always Me was all about why is it I always get myself in these situations? Mm-hmm. And other stuff like the motherland, that was written after I just watched the Black Panther football. Well, what is it that holds Africa back? Mm. Oh, I bet you that's a good one. Um, yeah, a lot of people seem to like that one. Yeah. <laughs> and you said you wa- you wrote that one after you watched Black Panther? That particular one I did. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. So now I know that we have a couple of people that just tuned in. Make sure you guys go ahead and share this video now. Make sure that you also um, like this video as well as um, like our respective Facebook pages as well. Um, if you're just joining the show, I actually have Dennis Aiken Muller Share on the show. He actually wrote a book of poems called Love, War, and Glory Spoken Words for All Season. He said, I'm not just writing for summer, I'm not just writing for spring. This is for all season. So I have him on exactly. the show. <laughs> I have him on the show today so you can learn a little bit more about him as well as um, why he decided to write his book of poems. Now, like I said before, the way that we make this show a lot more interactive is when you post questions and comments that you may have uh, for Dennis. This is your chance now, so don't don't sleep on this opportunity, okay? Uh, so, so do you actually consider yourself a poet or do you just consider yourself as an author or is there even a difference in the two? Um. Good question. So I think there is a difference. I probably consider myself more an author because if I look at poets, just do just do poetry, mm-hmm. they not they some of them may not just be writing books. Some of them may be writing articles or, or leaflets or just maybe even posting their Instagram. So authors tend to be people that produce books, where poets are just people that just focus on writing poems regardless of the medium it's published in. So I think there is a subtle difference. Okay, it can be both. I think authors and poems, poets, just pure poets and pure authors, they do tend mm-hmm. to focus on slightly different things. So what type of what type of poetry do you write? Does it like you know how some people can learn how to write poetry? And then there's some people that's just like, I'm gonna do it my own way, my own style, and I'm just writing. How do you, you I think do like more the latter, whereby I think about what I'm feeling or how I felt it about a particular subject. And I just write about it. So I think I'm definitely probably more the latter. Mm, okay. Okay. So what even makes you interested in poetry? Good question. Um, I think with poetry, it's one of those meetings where you can really express how you're feeling about a particular topic or a particular area at a particular point in time and just be so creative and you can make sure there's hidden meanings or provide subtle subcontexts. So you think you can be very, very clever with how you write stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now, are you the type of um, author that, because I know you're on the show and this is great and we're glad you're here, but do you also do your poems in like spoken word type of settings? I have been to one or two um, poetry um, jams and poetry um, sessions. So I have read up various things. Do you enjoy those? I love it. I love it. It just gives me a good way to interact with people, spread knowledge about the book and just what I'm about. So absolutely. Yeah. Because I feel like if I did poetry, like I don't truly enjoy speaking in front of people just because I just get so nervous and stuff. I wouldn't be that type of poet that, you know, just wrote it in a book. (laughs) I don't want to do the spoken word part of it, but I do, I do believe that it just um, brings so such more um, genuineness to it when you can actually hear the individual that wrote the poem, you know, speak the poem as well. I think that that's good. So, um, absolutely, yeah. Can you read one or two of your poems for us so the viewers can just sure. have a better? Is there any particular theme? Is there any particular theme or area that you want me to um, speak about? Well, I would like to hear the 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 poem that you wrote after you watched Black Panther. I think that was the Motherland. 
Okay, the motherland. Okay. Here we go. Okay, book in front of me. Okay, let me just post it so everyone can see it. And I'm going to read The Motherland. Okay. Okay, so ready? Here we go. Africa, the motherland, a beautiful place. Lots of sun, land, and raw natural goodness. Where else in the world will you find so much natural beauty? From our beaches to our waterfalls to the mountains. If you want natural, clean water and air, you can find it in Africa. If you want a safari, you have to come to the motherland. That's why our food is absolutely delicious. From jollof rice to keke to powder jam to fried plantain, we have something for everyone. The motherland is what it's all about. The motherland is where it's at. There's a lot of good in Africa. Yet on occasions, it's often viewed with such scorn. It's gone to the point that some people don't like staying there from Africa. It is true we do have some challenges, but no place is perfect. The Western world has its own challenges. For everything bad, I can name many good things. For my country, Nigeria, I can always look fondly at winning the 96 Olympics football tournament. Beating Brazil and Argentina on the way. I still remember the beating we gave to Spain in 1998, when they had Rayo Morientes and company. I look at some of the greatest players to have grace football. Zinedine Zidane, Patrick Vieira, George Weah, Didier Drogba, Samieta and Yusebo all have roots in Africa. Outside of sports, Africa has given so much to the world, including Nelson Mandela, an inspiration to the world. Chinoba Achibi, a best-selling novelist for Nigeria. Desmond Tutu, Nobel Prize winner. Ashaka Zulu, one of the great African kings. The motherland has given so much to the world and will continue to do so. Never forget that and always respect the motherland. Africa has so much untapped and unfulfilled potential. We have a potential power of life on our hands. It's a utopia waiting and wanting to be unearthed. Recently, I saw the Black Panther film, a film I would now put among my all-time favorites. Like a lot of black people, I felt inspired by that film. The first black superhero movie seen the play, but it was also a film that showcased Africa as a beacon for the world. Many of us wondered why Wakanda couldn't exist for real. What's stopping us from making a world of Wakanda? What is stopping us from making this a reality for Africa? Is it a lack of materials? No. We may not have right brave view, but we have oil, exotic fruits and plants, and many other natural resources that can only be found in Africa. Is it a lack of scientific geniuses? Look at the world. We have so many people of African origin in important positions in big companies, setting them being examples. The problem is they had to do that away from home. When they go home, their skills are sometimes not appreciated, rewarded or even encouraged. In some cases, this is all free. As for government, it's, it's true we have a lot of corruption there. But the rest of the world has corruption as well. Look at the scandals that have affected the Western world. Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky set back on the corruption at FIFA. Russian drug scandal, corruption exists everywhere, not just in Africa. The real issue is we need our government to be run by people for people. Too often, unfortunately, they are concerned with their own profits. What about a hero? Where is the real Black Panther? Mavlan doesn't need a hero. Mamma needs its people to stand together. We need to combine forces and grow each other as people. We need to grow our communities and spread empowerment. Knowledge, skills, and education are what is needed. We can all be Black Panthers. We just have to believe and take the small steps. The Roman Empire wasn't built in one day. Neither will create a utopia for the motherland. We have decades to catch up, but bit by bit we can get there. It isn't Wakanda forever. It is the motherland forever. It is the motherland for life. The end. That was good. That was so thank you, good. Thank you. <laughs> that was really good. So what type of person or what type of people do you feel um, will truly benefit from purchasing your book? I think people that like poetry in general, spoken word, people that maybe are feeling down and want that bit of encouragement, or people that want to think about where they're going in life and what, what ne are the next steps. Mm -hmm. I basically think people, I basically honestly feel there is something for everybody that's good. But if you're interested in hearing about love, you'll find it in here. If you're interested about how do we overcome the challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll find it in this book. If you're interested in how to better yourself and get that personal glory, you'll find it here. So I think there's something that everybody can appreciate in this book. Definitely. Definitely. And if you guys are interested in um, purchasing Dennis's book, um, all of the links are actually listed in the description box of where you can um, purchase his book from. So now with the now, what's the name of the poem that you just wrote, read? 
The motherland. So the motherland, what section would that one be under? That one there is actually a full, as well as Love, War and Glory, there's also another section called, um, sorry, let me just refresh my memory of what it's called. It's called Life Stories. Life there's, always a, there's also a Life Stories that, that section that explores different themes in life. Why did you decide to write that section as well? There were certain poems that I felt that weren't specifically Love, War and Glory that didn't fit into that category. Mm -hmm. but affected general everyday life so mm -hmm. I, that was the reason why i created that section mm, okay okay i understand so how do you draw your inspiration for your poems good question um it's a combination of things that i've experienced in the past things that i've seen happen in the world what i'm feeling or just maybe ideas and concepts that i see or explore on an everyday basis mm -hmm. so i've tried to basically use real world every everyday life experiences to write about what I do. Okay. Okay. So now I know that you mentioned Nigeria um, in the motherland poem. Are, were you born in Nigeria and you moved to London or were you born in London? I was born in London, but my parents are Nigerian. Okay. So do you get to go back um, to Nigeria to visit like some of your- Yeah, um, the last time I went back, was 2015 so i'm probably due a visit so i was born here then i went back when i was two for a couple of years and came back didn't go again until 2002 then i went again in 2010 and 2015. oh wow so you lived out there for a while yeah but i was very little i barely remember it okay i understand i understand so now are you the only one in your family that writes at the moment yes no one else is has <laughs> always planning to publish but at least not that i'm aware of uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I understand. So let's talk about the price of your book. So um, the paperback is fourteen dollars and thirty five cents here um, for U.S. citizens, but it is actually nine ninety five pounds for U.K. buyers. Is it just as an author in general? Is it difficult for you to um, learn or know what price to set your books as? Um, it can be, it can be. So my pricing was kind of set by my publisher mm -hmm. and I trusted their experience. But you've also got to look at your genre, how many pages and compare it to your competitors and basically see, is my price competitive with what my competitor is charging? Okay. That's the key. Okay. And the one of the questions that I like to ask authors is, how do you feel that your publisher was? Was it a good publisher? There were challenges working with Author House. Mm -hmm. um, they did a good, I feel like they did a good job in terms of distribution and that's how we to getting the book out there. Where I personally, I did criticize them about this. I feel like where they could have done more effort is market the book and actually get it on people's faces. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, as an author, where you get your value is from readers actually reading the book. And I felt like a lot, some of the stuff they did wasn't really targeting that. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, let's look at this show. How this came about was me send a link about my book or one of the Facebook groups and you found me. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to see my publisher do a bit more in terms of, well, connect with the actual audience. And that's one of the reasons why for my next book, I'm going to go with Mason, my own publishing company. I've set up my own print label. Yeah. So to give me more creativity and also save certain costs, but also get more control in terms of, well, actually marketing and actually reaching out to end users. Sorry, not end users, readers. That's, that, that's my IT background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but with that, when you do decide to, and the reason why I like to ask these questions about publishers, because we have um, individuals that watch the show that are interested in writing their own book, you know, but since they're at those beginning stages, they don't know like the ins and outs of things. So when you do talk to a publisher, is that a, a question that you should pop, pop, possibly ask a publisher when you are deciding if this is the right publisher for you about the marketing side of it? I think you need to basically, yeah, I think you need to basically ask your publisher, what is it that you're actually gonna do? How are you gonna make sure you get served? Because also let's not forget, it. If you're a new author, you don't have that profile of credibility yet. So you, 
you do also need to do stuff to build yourself up. But you need to basically treat it almost like a business investment. Because for me, marketing and investment should be minimal cost, maximum impact. So you've got to make sure that if I invest X amount, you want to be getting at least double that. So authors do need to also treat it as a business to a certain degree. And when you interact with your publisher, you need to basically say, okay, what's their track record? What other published, what other people have they published? And what has been their success stories like? So look at their track record in terms of determining the publisher. Because that could also have a say in terms of how well you do. Mm, mm, okay. So I know that you touched on your Ink and Stir um, books publishing company. Um, and you are actually going to publish your first book under that label um, in 2020. Uh, why did you decide to start your own publishing company? Um, I felt like with Wolf House, I learned a lot working with them. But I just felt like there may be certain things that you could I could have done that maybe would have allowed me to reach different types of people, different types of readers. And I felt like a lot of the things I've done, I've got in newspapers, I'm on your show, that was done by me and not my publisher. So it's almost that, and also considering that they do get the lion's share of it over what you make, I almost felt like, well, what actual value add am I getting from you? I've learned a lot about the book publishing business from them, mm-hmm. but I just felt, considering it's almost like sometimes, if you look at some of the people in music, they'll start from a music producer, get a certain level, learn certain things, and to get more control of the rights and terms, they maybe go and do their own thing because I have that experience. I kind of feel that like I'm at that stage in terms of where I want to go next in my book. Mm-hmm. So now, can you share with us the type of book that you'll be writing next, or would you like to keep it a secret? Or <laughs> I can share some details. I can share okay. some details. I'm not going to share the title because that's not a secret until it, okay. until it goes into pre sale mode. Uh-huh. It's basically going to be a fiction book. It's going to explore in the theme of slavery. It's going to ask the question, what about if slavery never existed? Oh, you said what? And the story is- Wait, 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 wait. So you said, are you saying more so like what life would be like if slavery would have never existed? Kind of. The book's going to be answering that question. That is going to be so good. I know you think it's going to be good too, but I'm just saying. <laughs> and somebody that's here, that's going to be so good. That's going to be good. It's going to be different. It's also, I feel like, what I found also with poetry is, it's a very hard, it can be a very hard job to to market. Because I looked at fake Amazon. If you look at the 20 best selling books, 18 of them are fiction. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's probably a bit more of an appetite for fiction. And also, even though I want to write a full lot to love one girl, I feel like I need some time to let some of those ideas bed in. But I don't want to just be producing the same material. So mm-hmm. I want to come back to that in a few years time and think, well, what do I feel like now? So I feel like this will be a good story to pursue in the meantime. So now, were you, um, were you more so motivated to write that type of book, meaning your fiction book, are you more so motivated to write that type of book because of um, your experience with Black Panther? Uh, No, no. I think that's more a case of the book I'm going to write is I've looked at some of the books out there. They cover slavery from from, this is slave and this is what happened. But I don't ask the question, well, what if it didn't happen? What about if you go back in time and change things? So mm-hmm. the book's going to be playing around that concept. Okay. Okay. That's going to be so good. Y'all, so that's why I'm saying, that's why I put all of Dennis' contact information in the description box. Because many of the guests that I have on the show, you know, they are still in the works of some projects. And so that's why I want you all, the viewers, to be able to follow um, these authors like Dennis himself. So you can um, just stay in the loop of when he's releasing this book, when he has decided to share a little bit more, maybe even the title of the book and things Not like that. Not until we release that. And yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I understand. I understand, but that's why I'm saying that's why I like people to um, know your 
to go ahead and follow your Facebook page and to follow you on Instagram so they can always be notified um, when you are working on and release new projects. Um, so I'm excited for that. That is going to be really good, Dennis. I'm excited for you. So um, with, with so many spoken word books out there, um, you know, that we are able to buy, why should somebody make your book a part of their collection? Three words, love, war, and glory. There's no <laughs> book out there that gives you those three things in one go. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's the sales pitch, basically. I understand. <laughs> so what advice... No, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, no, I'm seriously feel, honestly believe that if you, people do read it, people will feel like, okay, I'm actually having a conversation with this person. Mm -hmm. I genuinely believe that this is something that everybody will get something out of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what advice would you have um, to someone that is interested in in writing a book? What advice would you tell them? Three free things. Pick up your pen or laptop and just start writing. Writing's the easiest part. Mm -hmm. Second thing is build up your readership. Like one of the things, things I felt with Love One Glory that didn't that hurt it was I felt like my publisher released the book, but I didn't think hey, but let's build up the readership first so that when it comes out, we've got a ready made audience for us to cater towards. And I felt like I was playing certain catch up. So if you look at some authors, what they tend to do is they release a book and they expect people to buy it. Mm -hmm. Whereas you look at other industries, they don't do it. Look at films. Look at all the major films that you see. They always have a three to four month period where they really get the word out there. Then when it comes out, people flock to it. We need to, as authors, we start doing the same thing with our books. We think, what do boxing promoters do? Basically, you've got to promote the thing first. Promote your book. Write the book on certain quality. Get into pre sale mode and give yourself maybe a three to four month gap whereby you can promote it so people know to flock to it. Then you've got an audience. Mm -hmm. And a final thing from there is some be careful that you don't just use Amazon. And the reason why I say that is some people would go to Amazon then what I don't realize is they use Amazon completely lock yourself in. If you go to Amazon, what you don't realize is actually you will never get your book into bookshops and you limit your distribution. Where you should be using platforms such as Ingram Spot, so you get worldwide distribution, and that's what all the book major publishers and bookshops use. And that way, you cover Amazon, you cover the Kindle, you cover also bookshops. Very important. Make sure your book can be out there. So look at platforms such as Ingram Spot, for instance. And that was something I learned whilst I was on my publishing journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So did you have somebody? Because I know you said you learned this on your publishing journey. Um, but I think it's sometimes it's so difficult to um, learn everything as you go along. And I know for myself, sometimes I only learn things after I've made the mistake. You know, did you have somebody walk alongside with you to help you with this stuff? Or was it a matter of you made a mistake and now you've learned? I would say I had an experience on a journey. Some parts I've enjoyed, but some parts I feel like, it's going to be even better if I knew these things. So I, I don't think I've made any mistakes at all because if I hadn't gone with Wolfhouse, there are certain things I wouldn't have learned. I mean, even things like the cover, what it took to get that cover, there are certain things I knew about cover, didn't know about cover design, or even how to do like video promotions that I wouldn't have learned if I didn't go with Wolfhouse. Now yeah. I have that experience and exposure. Mm-hmm. I understand. And can you show people the cover right quick? No problem. If people can see it, let me yeah. bring it towards. Well, bring it up to like. Okay, let me go. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, guys, make sure make sure that you go ahead and visit the description box. Like I said, Dennis, um, you can purchase Dennis' book uh, with those links that's in the description box. And I, I can't say Dennis like just to. Uh, piggyback what you said, having different publishers and I mean, not different publishers, but different avenues to sell your book. You are the first author that I've ever had that have 
that many links um so people can <laughs> so people can purchase uh, your book but i understand what you're saying now um and why you did decide to go that route in selling your book um dennis again i just want to thank you so much for being on the show authors to know and their books to read i really hope that you guys um just add this book to your collection just because of the variety of poems that it does off um offer to you all and dennis i hope that um i wish you nothing but success because i i feel like that book uh, that you're the hush hush book that you're also going to be coming out <laughs> with i'm telling you that's it <laughs> that book is going to be hot um uh, it's going to be really good and um you all Thank you guys so much for just taking time out of your busy Saturday um, to take time to learn more about Dennis and why he decided to write his book, Love, War and Glory, spoken words for all season, not just one season, but all seasons. Make sure you guys go ahead and follow us on our um, Instagram pages as well as our uh, Facebook pages. If we're not friends already on Facebook, make sure you send me a friend request actually dennis has his um his books facebook page listed on there make sure you go ahead and follow him on there as well i hope you guys have a great day and if you're watching this at night have a great night i'll see y'all later bye, -bye.